buy a car, build wealth, and start a business. In fact, do we have any small business owners here? I love our small businesses. I got a plan for you. I love our small businesses. Our small businesses are part of the backbone of America's economy. Bless you all for the work you are doing. So under my plan, we will also bring down the cost of housing. And we will help entrepreneurs start and grow small businesses. My plan will expand Medicare to cover the cost of home health care for our seniors. So that more of our seniors can live with dignity. And you know, I'll just give you a little background on it in terms of a personal story. So I took care of my mother when she was sick. And for any of you who have taken care of an elder relative, you know what that is, right? It's about trying to cook something that they can eat. It's about trying to find clothes that they can, they can handle on their skin. It's about trying to, from time to time, think about something that'll put a smile on their face or maybe just make them laugh. It's about dignity. But under the current system, and especially for those in the sandwich generation who are raising young kids while you're taking care of your parents, it's difficult and under the current system to get help for taking care of your seniors, unless you got the extra money sitting around, you'd have to leave your job or pay down all of your savings to qualify for Medicaid. That's not right. That's not right. So my plan is about saying, let's have Medicare cover the cost of home health care for our seniors, which is a matter of understanding how real people are living and understanding the importance of everyone being entitled to dignity. Our plan in terms of an opportunity economy will lower costs on everything from health care to groceries. I'll take on corporate price gouging because I've done it before and I will do it again. My plan will also give middle class tax cuts to 100 million Americans, including $6,000 tax credit for the first year of a child's life so that our young parents can do what they naturally want to do, which is parent their children well, but they don't always have the resources to be able to do it. So let's help them out so that they can buy a car seat, so that they can buy a crib, so that they can take care of that baby's needs during that critical phase of their development. We all benefit from it. We all benefit from it. Dignity. My plan also invests in American manufacturing and innovation because I will make sure America, not China, wins the competition for the 21st century. That's right. That's right. And so, to that point, and with pride, we all say, we must and we will invest in the industries that built America, like steel, iron, and the great American auto industry. And we will ensure that the next generation of breakthroughs from advanced batteries to electric vehicles are not just invented, but built right here in America by American union workers. And Michigan, I know I'm going to tell you what you already know, but let us be clear for folks who are watching from different parts of the country. Contrary to what my opponent is suggesting, I will never tell you what kind of car you have to drive, but here is what I will do. I will invest in manufacturing communities like Kent County. Together, we will retool existing factories, hire locally, and work with unions to create good paying jobs. Yeah. 
including jobs that do not require a college degree, because here's where I come from. I know a college degree is not the only measure of the skills and experience of a qualified worker. And I intend to re-examine federal jobs, when you all elect me president, to assess those jobs that should not have that requirement. And then I intend to challenge the private sector to do the same. Now, all of this is to say Donald Trump has a different approach. He makes big promises, <laughs> and he always fails to deliver. So remember, he said he was the only one. You know how he talks. He, the only one who could bring back America's manufacturing jobs. Then. America lost almost 200,000 manufacturing jobs when he was president. Facts, including tens of thousands of jobs right here in Michigan. And those losses started before the pandemic, making Donald Trump one of the biggest losers of manufacturing jobs in American history. And his track record for the auto industry was a disaster. He promised workers in Warren that the auto industry would, and I'm going to quote, not lose one plant during his presidency. Those were his words, not one plant. Then American automakers announced the closure of six auto plants when he was president, including General Motors in Warren, and Stellantis in Detroit. Thousands of Michigan auto workers lost their jobs. And Donald Trump's running mate recently suggested that if they win, they would threaten the Grand River assembly plant in Lansing, OK? The same plant our administration protected earlier this year, saving 650 union jobs. 650 union jobs. His running mate called those table scraps. So we fought hard for those jobs, and we believe that you deserve a president who will protect them and not insult them. And make no mistake, Donald Trump is no friend of labor. Let's be really clear about that, no matter what the noise is out there. He is no friend of labor. Just look at the record instead of his rhetoric. Look at the record. And let's not fall for the okie doke. <laughs> Seriously, he encouraged automakers to move their plants out of Michigan so he could pay, they could pay their workers less. Understand what that was about. So they could pay their workers less. And when the UAW went on strike, to demand the higher wages they deserved. Donald Trump went to a non-union shop and attacked the UAW. And he said, he said, striking and collective bargaining don't make, quote, a damn bit of sense. A damn bit of difference is what he said exactly. That it doesn't make a, quote, pardon my language, a damn bit of difference is what he said. <laughs> All right, brother. <laughs> so Michigan, you know better. Strong unions mean higher wages, better health care, and greater dignity for union members and for everyone, whether or not you are part of a union. Get that straight. Get that straight. Which is why, when I am president, I will sign the PRO Act into law and make it easier for workers to join a union and negotiate for better pay and working conditions.
And now Donald Trump is making the same empty promises to the people of Michigan that he did before, hoping, hoping you will forget how he let you down the last time. But we will not be fooled because we know how to read Project 2025. For those who haven't seen it, just Google it. <laughs> 